a premium price tag for a premium view. Absolutely stunning apartment that we offer for your competition. In Australia's largest market, action at this auction is heating up. Offered twice now, is there another number that helps you by the way? The winning bid, nearly $200,000 above the reserve. And it is sold, congratulations, well bought. It goes to a buyer outside of the room, leaving some disappointed. It's been hard, it's been getting harder, the supply is short. The interest rates haven't really dampened the interest because there's less supply on the market. The agent says even getting to auction these days is rare. I'd say we're finding about two thirds of our stock is selling before auction day um, and then the balance is pretty much around auction day. Fewer properties than usual are up for sale. They're still well below where we would typically see them this time of year. So you've got about 130,000 properties on the market for sale. Usually this time of year it's 180,000. That market tension is one of the reasons property prices nationally have risen for a fourth consecutive month. In June, they were up 1.1 per cent, but are still down more than 5 per cent over the past year. Sydney and Brisbane led the latest gains, followed by Perth, Adelaide, Melbourne, Darwin, the regions and Canberra. Values in Hobart declined. Analysts say while prices are still rising in most capital cities, the pace of growth is starting to slow. This could be an early sign that continued rate rises and revisions for higher rate rises uh, are starting to have some impact on the market. Analysis by Rate City suggests the RBA's 12 interest rate hikes have reduced the borrowing power of an average family of four by almost a quarter of a million dollars. And that capacity is set to fall even further, with most economists expecting one or two more rate hikes to come, which means the property price growth is also likely to fall. It remains to be seen whether that will continue into the second half of 2023 if we were to see ongoing interest rate rises from the RBA. Property expert Louis Christopher warns the real danger for prices will be if people lose their jobs as the economy slows down. If we go into recession, I've no doubt we'll see another fall in housing prices. Recession means a rise in unemployment. A rise in unemployment means more defaults in the housing market and more defaults means housing price falls. In the country's second hottest market, buyer's advocate Joanne Boyd says she's busy looking for properties. Sellers are not willing to sell. Um, there's still an abundance of buyers around that we're experiencing. Hey John, it's Joanna. She expects more homes will be put up for sale as the weather warms. It seems to be that a lot of um, sellers are waiting for the spring rush, the spring boom, um, but realistically that's going to become even more problematic when um, there's going to be an absolute fury of um, buyers and sellers. A fury of activity as supply and demand dynamics change. So can property prices continue to withstand interest rate pressures? Earlier, Angus Moore, economist at PropTrack, told me depressed stock levels will continue to provide support. In terms of the number of new listings hitting market, it's down about a fifth, depending on the month you're looking at, but about a fifth compared to a year ago. And so that just means it's, it's a bit more competitive for buyers competing for that new stock. Is there a sign of strength in some areas of the market, perhaps even homes that aren't making it to the open market but are being snapped up by buyers agents? Yeah, there's certainly, you know, it's not one uniform market across Australia, of course, and we are certainly seeing pockets of strength, particularly actually in Sydney at the moment, which has seen a pretty strong rebound this year. Prices are up about 4.5% from December, which is it's a pretty sharp rebound. They're still lower than they were at peak, but it's a pretty sharp rebound. And in particular, it's in the inner city and in the eastern suburbs that we're seeing a lot of that strength. Given the problems people are experiencing in obtaining finance from bank lenders, where is the money coming from? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. You know, it, obviously the amount that a new borrower can borrow has fallen, the maximum amount by 30%, give or take, as a result of higher interest rates. Part of the story is actually we're seeing a lot of people with very low mortgage balances buying homes. You know, we get data from the banking regulator on the types of purchases and types of loans being taken out. And the number and the share of low LVR loans, so that is people with a very large deposit, has actually increased. 
And that's kind of consistent with the enormous increase in prices we saw across the pandemic and, and there being a lot of buyers with a lot of equity behind them to upgrade. Is there any sense that that's going to take a hit if interest rate rises continue? There is the possibility of another one tomorrow. There is certainly the possibility of another one tomorrow. It'd be probably about 50-50 tomorrow, if, and if not tomorrow, definitely August. It, that, that will flow through. You know, it's certainly going to have an impact. How much of an impact? I think we've been surprised at, at how little of an impact it's had thus far, but it is clearly going to bite. And, and we're seeing it bite at some parts of the market, particularly for first-home buyers. They've really pulled back compared to what we were seeing 18 months ago. Angus Moore, thank you. Pleasure. Thanks so much for having me.